Hey you guys, this is Mr. Millings and in this video we are going to learn about something called the rate of chemical reactions. So what is the rate of a reaction? Well it says right here that in chemistry some of the reactions we study occur very quickly and some can occur very slowly. And kinetics is the study of the rate or speed at which reactions take place. So if we take a look right here on the left, uh, the formation of rust, if we take a look we have a rusty uh, chain link right here. We have a rusty, uh, what appears to be a bridge right here. Uh, this appears to be the rust that's appearing on uh, a, a pier of some sort. And we have some rusty tractor parts right here. And so the thing about rust is that it takes quite a long time for rust to appear on these different objects right here. For this chemical equation that we see right here, it takes quite a bit of time and so the rate of this reaction is very slow however if we take a look over here at the combustion of cellulose that makes up wood we know this to be very quickly if we strike a match this wood is gonna burn at a very quick rate just like this pile of wood here or this pile of wood here or these uh, these twigs right here, these are going to combust and burn at a very high rate. So the combustion of cellul cellulose occurs very quickly. So why is it that some reactions have a very slow rate and some have a very uh, fast rate? Well, that's what we're going to take a look in this unit at. In kinetics, we are taking a look at the rate or speed at which reactions take place. So let's take a look now at how to calculate the rate of a reaction. And so it says right here that the rate of a reaction is going to be equal to the change in its concentration of a reactant or a product in moles per liter or molarity divided by its change in time in seconds. So the rate of a reaction is equal to the change in concentration of a reactant or a product divided by the change in time. And when we talk about the change in concentration here, concentration is usually going to be measured in something called molarity, which means moles per liter. And change in time is usually going to be measured in seconds, or S. Okay, so the rate of a reaction, the units for the rate of a reaction are typically going to be seen like this, moles per liter per second or simply molar per second. Those are going to be the two rate units that you will typically see used to denote the rate of a chemical reaction. We're going to see it like this or we can even see it like this. Both mean the same thing. All right, so let's take a look at this chemical reaction right here. We have A plus B producing C. And what if we wanted to write the rate of this chemical reaction? Well, the rate here, we can set up as three different little formulas. We can say that the rate is gonna equal the negative change in the concentration of A divided by the change in time this is going to equal the negative change in the concentration of B divided by the change in time. And this too is going to equal the change in concentration of C divided by the change in time. All right, so you now might be wondering, well, why are these negative? Why are these negative right here? But this is a positive change. Well, let's think about it. If this reaction is to proceed, if A plus B produces C, then the concentration of A and the concentration of B are going to get smaller over time as they produce C, right? So there's going to be a negative change here. There's going to be a negative change in respect to reactant A, and there's a negative change in respect to reactant B. However, C is being produced or formed from A and B, and therefore our sign here is going to be positive. So understand that concept that reactants are going to lose concentration and therefore have a negative change as they produce C, and products are going to have a positive change since they're being formed from A and B. And so if we wanted to describe the reaction rate here, we can do so in one of three ways. We can use this formula here. We can use this formula right here. Or we can use this formula right here. And we'll get the same answer every single time. That is because these equal one another. But what if we have a chemical reaction where our coefficients are not all one like we see right here? What if we have uh, coefficients of 2 and 3, for example? Well, let's take a look at that and let's figure out how we can describe the rate of a reaction 
for chemical equations where we have coefficients other than one. So in this reaction right here, we have one mole of A reacting with three moles of B to produce two moles of D. And what if we wanted to figure out the rate of this chemical reaction? If we wanted to figure out the rate of this chemical reaction, we can take a look at it in three different scenarios. We can come up with three different formulas that are all going to equal one another that will allow us to calculate the rate of this chemical reaction. We can say that the negative change in the concentration of A divided by the change in time is going to be equal to the negative change in the concentration of B divided by three times the change in time and this is going to be equal to the change in concentration of D divided by two times the change in time. So what does this mean? Well what this means is that if we compare A and B if we have three times the concentration of A this is going to equal the rate that we see right here right the negative change in the concentration of B divided by three times the change in temperature alright so understand that concept that if we're taking a look at this chemical reaction right here if we have three times the concentration of A then the rate that A is going to uh, be consumed to produce D is going to equal the same rate as our, uh, prod or our reactant B right here all right, so understand that concept that these coefficients here will help you to determine the rate of your chemical reaction. So now let's take a look at factors that affect reaction rates. And so it says right here that there are several different factors that will lead to an increase in the rate of the chemical reaction. And so let's take a look at factors that can affect reaction rates. And it says right here that if we wanted to speed up the rate in which a chemical reaction occurs, we can increase the surface area of the reactants. We can also increase the pressure of the system if we wanted to increase the rate that chemical reactions take place, specifically gases, then we can increase the pressure of the system. If we're talking about aqueous solutions, then we can increase the concentration of the reactants. If we uh, increase the temperature of the system, right? if we add heat to the system and increase the temperature, then the rate of the reaction is going to increase as well. And last but not least, we talked about in an earlier video that we can introduce a catalyst to the system, right? By introducing a catalyst to the system, we are decreasing the activation energy needed to uh, start that chemical reaction and therefore the rate of the reaction is going to increase. So these are five different factors that we can uh, employ to make chemical reactions occur at a much faster rate. So now let's go ahead and apply this concept of the change in concentration uh, over the change in time to a, a real chemical reaction and let's see how that works. In this example it says it was found that the rate of formation of N2 was 0.25 molar per second. At what rate was water being formed and at what rate was ammonia being consumed? So we have a chemical reaction right here where we have ammonia reacting with oxygen to produce nitrogen gas and water and so what we know about this chemical reaction here is we know that the rate of formation of nitrogen is equal to 0.25 molar per second or 0.25 moles per liter per second that is the rate that nitrogen gas is being formed in this chemical reaction right here and so what we want to figure out is this if we know the rate of formation of nitrogen gas is 0.25 molar per second then what is the rate of formation of water and then what is the rate of the consumption of ammonia gas in this chemical reaction right here well how do we figure this out well if we want to figure this out what we have to do is we have to take a look at these coefficients that we see in front of these substances. These coefficients are going to uh, tell us the ratios that we are going to have to use to figure out the rate of formation of H2O and the rate of consumption of NH3. And so let's first start taking a look at the rate of formation of H2O. If we take a look here, the ratio of water to nitrogen gas here is 6 over 2. 
6 over 2 and so this equals 3 and so what this means is that the formation of water is happening at a rate that is three times faster than the formation of N2 and so if we just take 3 and multiply it by the rate of formation of N2 we should be able to figure out the rate of formation of our water and so what we're going to do here is we're going to take 3 times 0 0.25 molar per second and when we put this in our calculator, we will end up with 0 0.75 molar per second. So if nitrogen gas is being formed at a rate of 0 0.25 molar per second, then our water here is going to be formed at a rate of 0 0.75 molar per second, three times faster because 6 over 2 is 3. But now let's take a look at the rate of consumption of N2 or I'm sorry, of NH3 here. We're going to take a look at the rate of consumption of our NH3. The rate of consumption of our NH3 now, we are comparing our NH3 to our N2, and we see here that there's a 4 and there's a 2 that come in front of these substances. So our ratio here is going to be 4 to 2. 4 to 2, which is equal to 2. And so what this means is that our ammonia here is going to be consumed at a rate that is going to be two times faster than the formation of N2 gas. And so all we need to do here is take two times the rate of formation of N2, which is 0 0.25 molar per second, and we will end up with 0 0.50 molar per second. And so at what rate is NH3 being consumed? Well, we see here that our ammonia gas is being consumed at 0 0.50 moles per liter per second or 0 0.50 molar per second. So understand that concept. Understand that these coefficients that come in front of these substances in a chemical reaction equation will help you to determine the rates of consumption of reactants or the rates of formation of products. So if you like what you see, go ahead and click that little bomb in the bottom right hand corner and that will subscribe you to my channel. And feel free to leave any comments or questions in the comment section down below. And I really hope you guys found this helpful.